Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about CSS interview questions and answers. I have been getting a tons of messages from you all asking for a series on this topic just like I did for HTML. So I decided to put together a video that covers some of the most common and important CSS interview questions you may encounter. Whether you are a seasoned web developer looking to brush up your skills or a newbie preparing for your first job interview, this video will have something for you. We will cover topics like box model, positioning, floats, media queries and more. I'll be walking you through each question and providing detailed answers along with some tips and tricks to help you remember the important concepts. By the end of this video, you will be well equipped to tackle any CSS interview question that comes your way. So if you are ready to dive in into the world of CSS interview questions, hit that subscribe button and let's get started. We will begin with the very basics. So the first question on today's list is what is CSS? CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. It is a styling language used to add visual design and layout to HTML and other markup languages. CSS works by selecting HTML elements and applying style rules to them, such as setting the font, color, size of text, or maybe adjusting layout, positioning of elements on a web page. Let us look at this example to better understand what is HTML and CSS through an analogy of human body. As you can see here, just as the human skeleton serves as the foundational structure that supports and holds all the body's organs, HTML serves as a backbone of web page, acting as a placeholder for all of its web elements. Meanwhile, CSS is similar to the features of human body such as skin, color, height, weight, eye color, as it is primarily concerned with the presentation of HTML elements. So, overall CSS is a crucial tool for web developers and designers enabling them to create visually appealing and functional websites. Moving on to the next question on today's list. How can you integrate CSS on a web page? CSS can be integrated into a web page using several methods. These methods are called inline CSS, internal CSS, and external CSS. In inline CSS, you can add CSS directly to the HTML element using the style attribute. In internal CSS, you can add CSS within the head section of the HTML document using the style tag. In external CSS, you can create a separate CSS file with a .css extension and link it to the HTML document using the link tag within the head section. You can see the example of inline CSS, internal CSS and external CSS in the example here. As you can see in the first example we have used the style attribute. In the second example we have used the style tag. While in the last example we have used the link tag with href attribute pointing to the CSS file. It is recommended to use external CSS as it allows for better separation of concerns between HTML and CSS, making it easier to maintain and update the styles across multiple pages. Additionally, external CSS can be cached by browser, resulting in faster page loading times. Now, let us move on to the one of the most basic and common question that you might get asked in a CSS interview. What is a CSS selector? In CSS, a selector is a pattern or expression that identifies the HTML element to which a style rule should be applied. Selectors allow you to target specific elements on a web page based on their name, that is tag name, class, ID, attributes or their relationship to other elements. Let's check the example here. In this example, the selector h1 targets all the heading 1 elements on the web page, while the selector dot menu targets all the elements with the class attribute of 
value menu. CSS selectors can also be combined using various selectors allowing for more complex and specific targeting of elements. As you can see in the third example, the selector ULLI targets all the list items within an order, unordered list. Overall, selectors are a crucial part of CSS allowing you to apply styles to specific elements or group of elements on web, web page. We will be discussing more about the types of selector in the next part of this series. The next question in today's list is, what is a rule set? A rule set consists of a selector and one or more declarations. The selector specifies which HTML element the rule applies to and the declarations define the style properties and values to be applied to those elements. In this example, P is the selector and color and font size are the declarations. The value blue is assigned to the color property while 16px is assigned to the font size property. As you guys might have seen, I do a basic CSS reset at the beginning of each of my project and many of you guys ask me what is a basic CSS reset. So let me cover that for you guys in this next question. So what is the difference between reset CSS and normalized CSS? Reset CSS is a CSS file that is used to remove all the default browser styles on HTML elements, setting them to a consistent baseline. This is achieved by resetting all margin, padding and border values to zero and setting the font size to default values. The idea behind using a reset style sheet is to start with a clean slate and create a consistent style for all the browsers. Reset CSS can also help to reduce inconsistencies and make it easier to create cross-browser compatible designs. Now coming to normalized CSS. Normalized CSS is also a CSS file that aims to provide consistent default styles across different browsers. However, instead of resetting all styles to zero, normalized CSS attempts to preserve useful defaults and normalize styles across different browsers. It does this by selectively applying styles to elements rather than resetting them completely. Normalized CSS includes a lot of specific CSS rules that address common cross-browser inconsistencies such as default font size of headings, differences in high line height and more. So. Overall, the main difference between Reset CSS and normal, Normalized CSS is that Reset CSS is a more aggressive approach that removes all browser styles, while Normalized CSS preserves some useful defaults while addressing cross-browser inconsistencies. The choice between Reset CSS and Normal CSS depends completely on the project requirements and design preference of the developer. So guys, that's it for today's tutorial. I will be back with more questions in the next part of this series. Till then, stay tuned in and subscribe to my channel. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you want me to cover some other questions, please comment them below. Happy coding!